All right, guys, here's a quick re-edit. I uh, just needed to do this uh, touch-up really quick because uh, I didn't record the first 30 seconds of this. Uh, so the radius of a unit circle, remember it's called a unit circle. So that means the radius is 1. So the first thing I would probably do is fill in the coordinates that are obvious. The radius is 1. That means this distance from the center, this is the origin here at 0, 0. The center all the way to this coordinate is 1, 0. So all the ones on the x-axis and y-axis are easy to fill in. That's going to have to be 0, 1. That's coordinate negative 1, 0. This is going to be coordinate 0, negative 1. And then finally, I'm back at 1, 0. And then the obvious ones in degrees, the dashed lines put a degree in there. In there. That's 0 degrees. This is going to be 90 degrees. This is going to be 180 degrees. This is going to be 270. And then finally, the whole revolution is 360. And then you got to know these guys. That's 30 degrees. That's 45 degrees. That's 60 degrees. And then finally, 90. And the reason why those are the angles that we're putting in there is because those are the special angles. Uh, this distance between the x-axis and your first angle that you hit, your first special angle, is always going to be 30 degrees. So that's 30 as well. 30, 30, 30, 30. And then the intermediate ones, the ones in the middle between the 30 and the 45, all those are 15, guys. So those gaps are, the, the gaps are 15 degrees. Uh, so hence, you know, 30 plus 15 is 45, 45 plus 15 is 60. And that's how we get them all, guys. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, continue. So there you go. So you're going to continue those patterns. I'm going to erase all these things there now. Oh, I didn't want to erase that one. Uh, Oh, well, that's okay, guys. Uh, so we're going to continue the pattern. So we're going to go difference of 30 degrees. That's 120. Then you're going to add 15. So that's going to be 135. That's a 3 there. It just came out dumb. Add another 15. That's going to be 150. And then the difference between 150 and 180 is 30. You're going to add 30 to the 180. That's going to be 210, 210. Uh -huh. uh, add another 15 to that. You're going to get 225 degrees. Add another 15 to that. You're going to get 240 degrees. And then the difference between 240 and 270, that is 30 degrees. Then 270 plus 30, that's going to be 300. Then 315. Then 330. And then notice the difference between 330 and 360 is 30 degrees. So I think we're winning with life uh, at the moment. We're winning with math life. Uh, let's continue this beautiful math. So let's do the radians now. Uh, let's do the obvious radians at zero radians at zero at 90, maybe you know this one, maybe you don't. It's pi over 2. And at 180 degrees, it's pi. At 270 degrees, it's 3 pi over 2. And then one full revolution, is 2 pi. So fill those in really quick. And here we go. Now we're going to do the radians. The solid line is where we're putting the radian in there. So 30 degrees. 30 degrees. I'm going to multiply that by pi over 180 to get it in radian form. 3 goes into 18 16 times, so that means that 30 goes into 180. Did I say 16 times? 6 times. Man, what's going on with me? So there it is. So I'm going to write pi over 6. 45 degrees times pi over 180. I don't think you necessarily need a calculator. If you want to use a calculator, that's fine, but I don't think you need it. 45 times 2 is 90. So since I have 180 and 180 is double of 90, it must be 45 times 4 that gives you 180. So this has to be pi over 4. 45 goes into 180 four times. So pi over 4. See, you don't need a calculator, guys. Uh, 60 degrees, so let's do the 60 degrees. 60 degrees times pi over 180. 6 goes into 18 three times. So pi over 3. All right, we got that down. Uh, let's see if we can figure these out. I think, I think that you can probably figure it out on your own. Uh, I know you can do that. I'm 100% sure you can do this on your own. But uh, 6 goes into 12 two times, so 2 pi. 6 goes into 13, into 18 three times, so 2 pi over 3. So here's what I was going to try to tell you guys. You guys already told me, because we, yesterday we learned reference angle, that this one in green right there, that's pi over 3. Do you guys agree that that distance is pi over 3? That angle measure distance in radians? Yes. Yeah. That's pi over 3, guys. And because that's pi over 3, look what you could have done. You could have taken the whole pi and then just subtracted one-third of pi. So the whole pi minus pi over 3 gives you 2 pi over 3. Chavez, I don't see it. Well, look, put 3 over 3 there. 3 over 3, 3 minus 1 is 2 and 2 pi. 
with the same logic, with that same logic, I can find this one. This one here is going to be 4 pi over 3. See? See how simple that guy that was, guys? With that same logic, I can find this one. That distance there is pi over 3. So let's see. That's 2 pi. 2 pi minus pi over 3. So to get the common denominator, double it. So put a 3 there. Make that a, a 6. See, 6 divided, 6 divided by 3 is 2 pi. 6 minus 1, that's 5 pi over 3. See, I'm trying to tell you guys, Travis, what are you telling me? I'm so confused. I don't know what you're talking about. And frankly, I don't even like this class. Okay, that's supposed to be you guys, but <laughs> uh, I apologize, guys. I'm having too much fun here. I, I don't know why, but I, I you know what? Let, let me just continue. Let's just do math. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here, guys, is to look at the patterns. The patterns will tell you what you should do next. If you want to keep using the conversion, multiply by power over 180, you can. But you know, you know this gap here is power over four. You know that. You know that from looking at quadrant one. So if you know that's power over four, subtract one fourth of pi from pi, and you get three pi over four. This is one six pi or pi over six. Subtract one six pi from pi, and that's five pi over six. Look how simple that was. Look at this. This is one six pi right there, that reference angle. So I add one six pi to pi, and that's going to be seven pi over six. Use that same logic, 5 pi over 4. What do we do on this side? Well, let's see. This is 1 6 pi. We're going to subtract 1 6 pi from 2 pi. So that's going to be 11 pi over 6. Chavez, how did you do that so fast? Let me show you. What did we do last time? We did 2 pi minus pi over 6. What are we saying? We did a common denominator, so we doubled the, that 2 there. So that's going to turn to 12. 12 divided by 6 is 2 pi. And we just subtracted 1. See? So how do you do it without writing anything? Okay, let's figure out a game plan. How do you do it without writing anything? We're gonna figure this one out. This one right here, what you do, you keep that denominator, that denominator stays the same everywhere, and you double it. So four doubled is eight, and then you subtract one. Seven pi over four, there it is. Do you see how we did it, guys? Yes. Yes, so here's the beauty about math. M and M, Ms. Moreno and Ms. Moreno. This is, a, this is why math is beautiful, guys. Because look, no matter what you do, there's patterns everywhere. There's patterns everywhere. Uh, so what do I do? These, you're just gonna have to memorize. I'm sorry. You're just gonna have to memorize those. Either memorize those or always do the conversion. Next, keep the denominators the same. This is a circle, everything's symmetric. If you have a three there, then you're gonna have a three on that one. If you're gonna have three there, you're gonna have a three on this one as well. Because they're like, quote unquote, if you were to bend the X axis, this point would be where this point is at. So now you know that. Keep it all the same because it's just, it's just symmetric about an axis. Next, on quadrant two, this number is one integer less than the denominator. Look at this. That number, that three is one integer less than the four. That five is one integer less than the six. In quadrant three, this number in the numerator is one integer more than the, new, than the denominator. So I have a six on the bottom, so put a seven. I have a four in the bottom, put a five. I have a three in the bottom, put a four. In quadrant four, double the denominator, look, double the three. Three doubled is six, minus one is five. Double the four and subtract one. Double four is eight, subtract one, seven. Double the denominator and subtract one. Double six is 12, subtract one, 11. See guys, you can memorize this whole unit circle just by knowing the concept. And there it is. The only memorization you did was you just memorized these three. And I guess these special ones here, but those are easy. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Okay. Practice makes progress. Practice makes progress, Miss uh, Eminem and Miss Chapman. And, and do we have an Hernandez down there? And Miss Hernandez? Or is that another class? My bad, guys. I'm going to know you guys eventually all. It's just that you guys are virtual and I don't have a chance to pick on anyone. I'm not a bully. I'm not saying like I pick on people. Like pick on anyone about math. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, but yeah, guys, see, it's all very, it's all similar. They're all, it's all just beautiful patterns and hopefully you fall in love with math. Um, the fact that we're even conscious and in this universe uh, is amazing to me. Is this universe infinite? Is this universe finite? We don't know. Uh, all we know is what we observe from the observable universe, right? And we know that that universe is 14 billion years old because uh, that's what we can see. 
but we don't know if it's infinite or finite. You know, that's what's uh, super crazy, guys. Uh, so I don't know if you guys like to stare at the stars at night, but when you're staring at the stars, don't you guys sometimes wonder, like, I wonder if I'm staring at infinity. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I really enjoy watching the stars and driving up to West Texas in the middle of nowhere and just, you know, spending hours just staring at the sky. I think sometimes we need to slow down a little bit. Anyways, getting back to math. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed what we've been doing so far. I hope that you can see that it's not hard to do. It's not. You don't need to be smart to know about the unit circle. You don't. Uh, you just got to know a little bit. That's it. All right. The coordinates. The coordinates, we're going to get the coordinates from, let's see, how are we going to get the coordinates? From a special right triangle that you studied, and you probably did this for like three or four weeks in geometry. Uh, see that triangle in green there, guys? That triangle in green is this one. It's the same triangle. This angle right there, that's what's 30 degrees. So I'm going to put 30 there. If that's 30, then that's 60 degrees there. And my radius is 1, so my hypotenuse is 1. That's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, you have the, prop, the following property. This n is not related to yesterday's n. That's the n that just... Uh, relates the short leg with the long leg with the hypotenuse. So the 30 degrees creates a short leg. So that length right there is the short leg. So my short leg here is n. My long leg here is n squared of 3. And my hypotenuse is 2n. Are we okay so far, guys? guys yes. We okay? uh, next, we're going to find the short leg. I'm just going to divide by 2. So that means that my short leg, this guy, has to be a half. Now I'm going to find my long leg. This says that I just got to multiply it by square root of 3. So I take my half and I multiply it by square root of 3. University of Houston loves this notation. Uh, that's fine. That's correct. Uh, I prefer, I think a lot of mathematicians would prefer square root of 3 over 2. So I'm going to call this square root of 3 over 2. Recognize, oh, that's a new bell. Hold on guys, they're gonna say something. Oh, maybe they didn't, okay, maybe not. Recognize that this horizontal uh, displacement, this bold green is the same as this right here, that bold green. So this coordinate right here, that's their coordinate x, y on this, that's this guy. So if this horizontal displacement is squared to three over two, that means this x distance is square root of 3 over 2. So that means this coordinate is square root of 3 over 2. Does that make sense to you guys? No. No? Oh, man. All right. This triangle is this triangle. It's the same one. So this in red is this in red. Isn't that just an x distance? Yeah. Yeah, that's what oh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whoa, zoomed into that. Yeah, that's just an x value. That's just that. Same thing with the y. This is a vertical displacement. That's a half. So that half is this distance. That's just a y value. So that's a half. Do you guys agree? Is that a yes, guys? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Miss uh, Miss Ana Moreno, do you agree? Yes. Okay. I'm not picking on you, Miss. It's just that, you know, now we know who is Ana, and now we know who is Mia. The M&Ms. All right. That right here is another 30, 60, 90 triangle, guys. So we don't have to do this all over again. We just have to recognize that your short leg and long leg toggle. That's all they do. They just switch sides. The short leg is now, the short leg is still half, but now the short leg is your X distance, and now your long leg is the, is the, is the Y distance. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. So now I can write half there, and I can write square root of 3 over 2. It's the same triangle. It's still a 30, 60, 90 triangle. But now this angle is the one that's 60 degrees. And this one up here, that little guy is 30 degrees. So you just toggle, oh man. 
you just toggle the X and Y values. So there it is. So now I know enough to plug in all the other coordinates, guys. Well, not all of them, but at least the 30, 60, 90 ones. So let's do, let's do it. Let's just reflect it. On quadrant two, it's the X value that is negative. So you put negative half there, and you put square root of three over two there. And then the next one at the 150 degrees or the five power over six, you put negative square root of three over two. That's a three there. And then positive half. And then go down to quadrant three, and they're both negative on this one. Negative square root of three over two, negative half. And then go down to the 240 or the four power over three and put negative half, negative square root of three over two. Go to the 300 and put one half. The X is positive now, but the Y is negative. Negative square root of three over two. Go to the 330 or the, the 330 degrees or the 11 power over six and put square root of three over two, negative half. All right, let's go ahead and I don't have enough space to do the 45, 45, 90 triangle here, guys. Uh, but you guys do. You guys have the back. The whole back of this page is blank if you printed it out. If you didn't print it out, just use another page. Uh, but if you printed it out, don't erase this. Just put it in the back. Like what I'm about to write, put it in the back. All right. So now let's talk about the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Did I erase everything there? Oh, I left that there. Okay. So notice, notice, what are we going to notice? Notice this triangle in blue. Do you guys notice that triangle in blue? Yes. That triangle in blue is this one. Here's the origin. That uh, looks okay, I guess. Here's the origin, zero, zero. And up there, that's that coordinate x, y. This is 45 degrees. This is 45 degrees. This is what is known as an isosceles right triangle. These lengths are the same. So I'm going to call that n. I'm going to call that n. I'm going to call that n squared of 2. That's the property. When you guys were in geometry, you studied the 45, 45, 90 triangle, and they said it was n, n, n squared root of 2. So get it up to there, guys. We know that the hypotenuse is 1. How do we know the hypotenuse is one? It's a unit circle. So the radius is the same as the hypotenuse, and that distance is one, because they told us right here that we're talking about one unit circle. So now that we got that out of the way, I want to figure out what n is. Since I know n square root of two equals one, I'm just going to get n by itself. We can divide by square root of two, and yes, it's fine if you say one over square root of two, but it's probably best if we radicalize this number. And all that means is, guys, that we're just gonna put the square root in the top, and the way to do that is multiplying by one or multiplying by itself. So whatever square root number you have in there, multiply it by square root of two over square root of two. This is just one, see, that's just one. So anything times one is itself. So when I do that, one times square root of two, that's square root of two. And then square root of two times two, that's two. Square root of two times square root of two is two. So this is square root of two over two. That is square root of two over two. So I come back up and I write square root of two over two, square root of two over two. And I'm gonna put that for all of them, guys. Negative square root of two over two, square root of two over two. Negative square root of two over two, negative square root of two over two. They're both negative on that one. Hopefully it came out. Square root of two over two, negative square root of two over two. How do we feel, guys? Do we feel okay? Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. All right, uh, let's all come back.